All right, this is going to be kind of a last minute idea. I am uh, just grabbed the camera real quick and decided I'm going to see if I can't uh, get this old dirt bike of mine going, this old Yamaha TW200. So I just cranked the door open. I'm going to make some room in here. It's been sitting for six years. So a lot of you uh, have that situation where you got a project, some kind of piece of motorized equipment that's been sitting for a good long time. And of course the carburetor gets all gummed up. So let's see if we can't get into this thing and make it run like right now. All right, I haven't had this whole girl out for years. This is my first street legal motorcycle. That's the one I rode when I got my, my license. And uh, I put a bunch of miles on it, but not a ton before I found out Harley Davidson's are fun <laughs> and expensive. And so that's what happened. I ended up into the Harley scene and this thing just got put on the uh, back burner. But now that I got places to go with this and Sort of getting back to riding style that I started with, you know, exploring back roads, gravel roads, little trails off the road, that kind of thing. I want to make this thing functional again. And the only way to do that is to get, I'm sure that car, and the battery's dead, but it's got a kickstart on this one. This is a 1987 Yamaha TW200. Okay, the first year they made these. And now it's 2020 and they still make them. <laughs> they still make this model uh virtually unchanged i mean yes there's there's changes but uh this is the one everybody wants because it's the first and i'm kind of thinking there's something about the red and white um color scheme that was specific to either the first year production or the canadian version of it uh when they you know import them into canada they were red and white but anyway there's something to do with the red and white scheme i'm sure people will will chime in and educate us all on certain details of these you'll see the original gas tank is no longer someone's updated the gas tank to a bigger tank they were kind of known uh as having a small tank and not getting very good range so the first thing people would do is is buy this upgraded tank i still have the original tank over in the other room it's up on a shelf i, I don't think i'll ever put it on but uh you know this little mod here this little piece of stainless i put on myself because the fender is cracked so it was just flopping around in the breeze so you know the only way you can hold down a piece of trim is with a horseshoe everyone knows that so that's what it's got other than that i got some snowmobile saddlebags on it right now that i'm going to take off uh i really don't see a need for them i got a b in here i'm gonna have to deal with <laughs> get lost <laughs> it um and of course it has the old gv trunk on the back which is a pain in the neck because i keep forgetting it's there and i go to throw my foot up over the back and smack right into it so um, every single time every single time oh no keys i'm gonna have to go rooting around for keys before i can get that off all right time is a waste and let's get into this hooray i found the key so uh, i think the red one's for this thing um and then you push that button yep and the whole thing comes off. Just notice that the seat is not even attached. So off she goes. All right, those can go somewhere else. Um, the battery I know is, is no good. I thought I might have to go through here to get to the carburetor, but 
absolutely not <laughs> there's no way because of the big shock and spring that's in there you got to go in from the side I'm gonna leave the seat off just now because I might need to get to some things through here looks like I can probably get in from the side maybe even take off some of these panels oh and they just looks like it just pops on I don't know if those are screws on the bottom or not no no I think it just slides slides off there yeah it just slides off sideways here we go holy there's a lot of stuff in there but yeah now I can definitely get to the carb on this side let's throw that underneath where I won't step on it maybe let's uh let's kick it over and see if see if the engine's stuck see if I can find neutral I think that's neutral I'll kick it over one slow just in case it's in gear What a painful kickstart on flip-flops. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, it's in gear. Okay, that felt more like neutral. I'll roll it back and just see. Oh yeah. That's much more neutral-ish. Oh yeah. It turns over anyway. Oh, that hurts the foot so bad. I won't be trying to start it with these flip-flops on. I'm gonna have to go get shoes on. I'm gonna have to get into this and you know. Nobody wants to just start an old motor that's been sitting for a long time without checking for mice nests. Mice get into things and definitely don't want to suck up any of their house material or any of their carcasses. So let's do a bit of that. Let's see if I can figure that out. Come on. It seems to be different on the other side. <clears throat> oh, this side is different. Maybe it's got a screw in there. Yeah, it does so. Two screws. Phillips, this is actually the first time I've ever had to tear anything apart on this. Okay, so got the cover off and I'm right back into another cover. So. Let's see what's in behind this one. Oh, mouse nest, check that out. <laughs> check that out, that is packed in there, oh boy. But luckily for me, there's a, a, a foam element that separates the carburetor from the air box here, so it looks like Nobody got past that. I'm hoping. Let's just take more of a look, but keep digging stuff out of here. Um, that's all it. Well, oh my. Oh yeah, they built themselves a little civilization there. I'm going to go get a hook and try to scoop more of that out. Oh yeah, I found a bunch more. <laughs> Luckily no mouse came out. Okay, looks like, yeah, this, <laughs> what have I been thinking? This air element, this filter element, uh, it looks like I've never, never even, well, I never knew, knew it even existed in here, but it's really bad. It's pretty dirty. Let's pull it out. All right. Hmm. Oh, and a screen behind it. So that's beautiful. No mouse stuff is going to get into this carburetor at all. But I might as well just scoop around here and pick out some of the bits. Um, I don't know if that screen is loose. No, it's probably part of this. Yeah, I think it's all part of this enclosure. Uh, so I'm going to have to take a look and see what to do. Maybe it can stay in place while the carb comes off. Or maybe I can just spray quick start in there. Okay, I am not real big fan of hacking my ankle, all the pieces, 
when I'm kickstarting an old bike. So off with the flip flop, on with the biker boot. Nothing could go wrong now. <laughs> I'm gonna check the oil real quick too before I do anything, uh, if I could find it. So this is where I pulled the plug off up here, but uh, it's not a dipstick. There's an actual window down here. So I don't see any oil in the window, but I bet you it's supposed to be level. So I'll pull the bike off the kickstand. And there is some movement down there. In fact, it's good. Mm, kind of a weird color though. It doesn't, oh, it's because of the color of the uh, glass window. I thought it was white, but it's just because it's fogged up there. Not fogged up, but dirty. Holy, it's set back in there. That's super smart. Well, I guess it keeps rocks and sticks out of it, but I really can't clean that. But anyways, I think now we should be able to see the actual color of the oil. Nice. It's very oily colored. So there's a little notch, top and bottom. So as so long as you're in between those two marks, you're good to go, and I'm good to go. So let's shoot a little quick start in there and see if it uh, puffs at all. I mean, it's a bit of a long shot to get any of this all the way in there, but I don't know, it might pull some of that through. <laughs> Boy, the things that happen. has been turned off. Oh, uh oh, now it's leaking. Yeah, that's that's not good. Turn that back off. Looks like there's a drain plug right there. So first things first, let's drain the gas out of this thing. And it was finger tight, which is probably why it was leaking. I'm just going to quick tighten it up again and open that and see if it still drips. It does not. So I don't have a big problem. It was just a little drain plug here. Now I tightened it too much. <laughs> it was uh, a little loose, so maybe I was trying to do this before and I just forgot. Hmm, let's just see if I leave it down here what happens. Oh, it's splashing on this and then all over the place. So I don't like that kind. No, nah, it's going all over the place, so that figures. I got to get some other system devised here. There we go. That'll do. That is gross looking stuff. Bright, bright orange gasoline. I used to think this bike was so big when I got it. <laughs> now it just looks so tiny. Okay, on, keys on, Ch choke is off, clutch is in. Okay, choke out. Now it should pull some gas into the curb, into the engine. Uh, try boosting it and go electric teeny little connections all rusty all right well I just did a whole whack of work on this thing and we're gonna have to rely on the little <laughs> the little Sony Handycam over there because I didn't have the GoPro on <laughs> rookie mistake okay negative negatory good buddy I got a light on, neutral. Let's see what happens. Alright. Let's toss a little spray in now while it's turning over. It started.
might have just been spray on them. I don't know if it was running on any fuel. The float bowl is probably, probably done for. Let's try it again. Uh, maybe a little less choke this time. Maybe like halfway if I can. put booster cables on the battery and just use electric start put some spray in while it was turning over and it lit it started but it just no matter what I did choke on choke off fuel was definitely on I know I've got the tab on off now but it was on it just would not start pulling fuel through the carb so uh, I think probably the best thing to do uh, I'm no expert just winging it as I go here but I think pulling the fuel inlet line off first would be the best solution that way I can see I can open up the fuel and see if gas comes out make sure the filter is not clogged up there's like a tiny little filter right in right in there um, so let's go ahead and do that there we go put it back on here and uh, just open it a crack here yeah, oh, it's a bit more of a crack. All right. So, definitely no issues with the fuel inlet line and filter. So, next is going to be the carbs got to come off. So, how do you do that? I think maybe bringing the pulling the tank off is the answer here. One screw. This one's a much bigger Phillips than the other one, so I just got a bigger screwdriver. Okay, put that somewhere safe. Perfect spot right there. Okay, there we go, it came off. Out of the way. Okay, so now I can get the cables off. I think that's probably the best bet to do first. Well, that wasn't very hard. How, how was that even? I think that was supposed to be tightened in there with the nut. <laughs> For, yeah. There's two nuts. So once you got your throttle position set, like the slack out of the grip, then you would set well, one of these, and then you'd tighten it together with the other one, and it's just been riding around in their finger tight. I don't know how that never fell off, to tell you the truth, but uh, that would have been a pain. Anyway, now we can slide the cable down under and the barrel then will slide sideways. It's hard to do one-handed, but I'm gonna try. Here we go. Half out and all the way out. So throttle cable gone or choke, would it? No. Oh, I see it's got dual cables so that when you throttle off, when you force the throttle back to a neutral position, it forces the carburetor off. So yeah, so it can go that way and also be pulled back. So you adjust them together so they're tight and it's like a closed loop on the throttle system. All right, so let's just wing this on up there and then the cable should, but it's not. It's being held in place some, oh, there's a little a little tab that's bent in. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, did they really do that? Oh, 
that worked actually quite easily. Here we go. Cable now off. Okay. So the cables are out of the way-ish. I don't know, do I really need to? This one's also just sitting loose in its little frame up here. It was just sitting loose down in there. So both of these had their little adjusting nuts wrong. So we'll fix that up when we put it back together. So it's getting easier. Now I got, um, so the fuel line goes in there. So that's gone. This is a vent, vent tube. There's one on each side. There's also, Oh, that's that's something different. EGR or something. Crankcase. I think that's a crankcase vent. So yeah, it's plumbed from the crankcase up into the breather box. So what else do we got? I can pull. I'll be able to pull the vent tubes out with it as an assembly. There's also. I'm assuming this black one back here hooks onto the bottom of the carb is you could probably see a bit of it in here It hooks up to the bottom. That'll be an overflow tube I would think in case you're All right, the most dramatic thing that's ever happened in my life and a GoPro battery died <laughs> So you missed it um, This little ground down allen key that I made did fit that manifold bolt and it did come loose so I'm gonna just uh, you might not be able to see it all but I'm just going to go right ahead and loosen that off the rest of the way maybe by finger now oh yeah went and bought a nice fancy magnetic nut and bolt pan but I don't know where I put it probably stuck oh that won't come out <laughs> Um, it might come out if I play with the carburetor a bit here and I twist it around and stuff. There it goes. Just need a little nudge. Other side. Oh, God. Oh, it went. She was pretty tight. Yeah, look at that. Just turn it sideways. Now, the... Like I said, those other tubes were still attached. I was hoping they would just pull out with the whole program here. And they did. Voila. Let's go see what we can do with this thing. Obviously, I want to pull the the um, the float bowl off first and see what's going on in there. I might as well just pull off these vent tubes now. This one, um, I'm not sure it'll come off. They're on there pretty tight. I can get some needle nose pliers in there and give them a twist to break them free. See how that works. It did work. How about that? Okay, loosen that one up. Give it a yank. There we go. Lines are off and already lost. Just put them right up here on this belt sander. What could go wrong there? All right, it's free of all encumbrances except for this. Um, you know what, I'm not even going to take off the manifold. In fact, I've, I think I'm going to tighten it on again because then I don't have to worry about its position, its alignment. It's correct as it is, so let's... Uh, and the O-ring, there is an O-ring in there as I'm pouring gas everywhere. That looks to be in good shape. I may replace it anyways. I have lots. And I'll, uh, I'll clean the face of the manifold off a little bit. Maybe probably putting the uh, carb in the vise with this. How much gas could possibly be in this thing? It, every time I turn it a different way, more gas pops out. I can already smell the, this thing. I mean, the gas that came out of it, it just smells like turpentine. Yeah, gonna have to give that a little bang with something. This looks like something. There it goes. And what do we have in there? Oh, it smells lovely. I'm going to remove the float. Little pin here that I thought 
would slide nice and easy, but it's stuck in place. Maybe, maybe I can just sort of break it free. Yeah, I did. Maybe I'll need these again though to grab the end. Okay. Now let's check the float needle. And there it is. Grab the light. Okay. I got to put some super duty bionic glasses on and have a look to see if there's a groove in the neoprene. If I can find some glasses, I can see what's going on. Oh, a lens just fell right. Just one thing after another. All right. Yeah. Rocking the little granny glasses here. All right, so let's take a boo. I, I mean, I see an image, but I don't see if I put the light behind it. Well, it's just going to blind me. That's dumb. But I don't see it as being a problem. I think it's time to head over to the Varsol tank and clean this guy out. I could probably take that off in do things with it I suppose but why don't I just do as little as possible and maybe resolve my problem there's also a cap here um, I'm wondering I'm thinking this is probably probably the idle circuit there so probably that's what that is it's nice and flexible and soft, so I'm not going to mess with it. All right. And I needed to put these here. Why? Uh, oh, here's a better spot. All right. Try on. Uh oh, there it is. You know what? That compressor's noisy. There you go away with you. Of course I got another door down there that's open but I'm too lazy to go down and close that one too. So if we hear a little bit of compressor noise, well it is a shop. It is the sounds that shops make. Okay, how about fuel inlet first? Right there. And uh, yes, I should have my glass on, but I'm just going to spray slow. And it should be coming in right here. And it is. There it goes. Nice. That is nice and clean in there now. How about the main jet? What if I crank the throttle open? And just have a look inside where the needle goes down into the main jet and just nice and easy on the air see if I can see I don't have any good light right now so you're just gonna have to trust me it's one time okay oh yeah oh yeah okay so it's not clogged Okay, drop the needle back in, but now my finger's stuck. Out. Okay. Okay, well, I cleaned up the carburetor tubes just because no reason. Vent tubes, overflow tube. Only thing clean on this bike will be these and the carburetor itself, and I've lost the carburetor. Where do I put it? I just looked at it, it's right there. Right? Oh, there it is. No reason for it to be there, but that's where it was. All right, it's probably going to be easier to put these on now. Yeah, so I'll put them on now. One, and two. Hopefully that O-ring seals still. It feels like it's got some meat on it still, so I'm not going to bother pulling it out and replacing it. 
I'm sure this thing's gonna be off again at some point and I'll replace it then. Like when I do an actual carb kit on it. This is just cleaning it out just to see if it'll uh, work for me. Okay, see so what we can do with this. Okay, so I had to turn it to get it started into the rear airbox boot. So that's what I'm doing right now. And it went in okay. on the other side. Okay, I just wanna tighten that up in the other side too and then I'll worry about that back. Airbox boot. Okay, crank it home. I'd like to cross my fingers, but they're all busy doing other things. Okay, did that stay on? Yes. Yes, it did. Not sure why I need to loosen those screws so much. I mean, 400 turns was plenty. I think all I have left to do is the throttle cables. And then the gas tank goes back on. It's good to know where my idle adjuster screw is now. In case that's the thing that's needed. Oh boy. That is going to get in there, right? Yeah, but I think before I do that, I have to do this. So, you know what I'm going to do. You're not going to see it. My hand's going to be in the way, but i got to get that barrel into that slot and the cable will ride up on that. So here's what I'm going to do. Is just do that. Barrel goes in, cable turns, goes into its little slot. Oops. It's going to be difficult because I can't see how far to go. There we go. I think, oh, no, almost there. <laughs> Why? There it goes. Look at that, eh? And then, because I got, oh, it'll move. I got to get that in there into its little spot that I think I crushed a little bit when it was in the vise. Um, can't move that. So with that being there, it's uh, not adjusted very well, lots of slack. So what I'll do is tighten this. I might as well, I don't know, do you put the other one in first? So let's try it. I mean, it only takes a minute to take it off. So barrel goes in its little groove there, cable goes through, comes back up. And <clears throat> that fits in its spot. So this one's actually, I think, pretty, pretty good. If I tighten that down. And this one here, see if I tighten that down. Ooh, oh, nice. There's no slack in there at all. So what had happened is this little um, nut had loosened off and it just created so much slack in there that I never even noticed it. There we go. Ooh. So that's probably my realtor. I should quick go check. Make sure everything went all right. I mean, it's only my life savings. That's all it is, it's just my life savings. So every dollar I have in life is in this email. Where's my phone? All right, just junk mail, had nothing to do with anything. Okay, gas tank's gotta go on. Okay, it went like that. I'll just put the finger tight for a second in case it matters at the front. Maybe a lot. Okay, just saw the filter bowl fill up. It's gurgling, so there's definitely fuel passing through. It'll be filling up the float bowl right now. If it gets to an overflow position, then, well, it'll come pouring out, and I know the needle and flow system is jammed up. And there it goes. So, I think, now that there's gas in it, I think if I tap it with a hammer, that float will stay up and it won't get so low that it's on such a big angle. So I'm gonna get um, just a little hammer. I was kind of afraid of that. That uh, 
those floats didn't really want to raise up too well. So, so the float bowl is full of fuel right now. I'm going to give it a tap and maybe. The float will release itself from its binding. And close off the, uh, the fuel valve. Like that. Just like that. Phew, I really didn't want to take that all back off again. Well, let's try starting it, eh? I don't want that to touch the frame. Make sure it's quite far away. Should be alright there. Oh, lights are on. But not the headlight, I don't think. No, the headlight runs on its own generator uh, the first year. That's how it was. Hey, let's give this a buzz. Neutral? Yes. Choke on. Probably just grease on the uh, on the exhaust pipe. <laughs> camera's about to die so let's wrap this up I'm gonna put the body panels back on and the air air box cover back on but hey it's running good I just adjusted the idle down a bit uh, because I had it too high now but it's idling lower now it'll go even lower than that I'm just gonna let it break in it's running like brand new it's got lots of power I just gotta learn how to ride it all over again 
I got so used to these big cruisers, these big Harleys, that I can, I just can't figure this thing out, but I will. And for now, there you are, 1987, Yamaha TW200. Cheers from Ontario, folks. Woohoo!